Hello and welcome to Cupcake Addiction's Volcano Cake Tutorial where I'll be showing you how to make this great smoking volcano cake using your giant cupcake mould. If you follow my channel My Cupcake Addiction you'll know that I love to show you how to make not only giant cupcakes but heaps of different things using your giant cupcake mould. I'm a big fan of many uses for the one pan. So tools and equipment that we will be using today, mine's going to be for a dinosaur party. So I've actually made mine as part of a great big dinosaur volcano cupcake tower. So I've got some little plastic dinosaurs. Now I picked these up in a pack. They came with all of these trees and it's a really common play set for children. In Australia, I bought mine at Kmart for $15 and for $15 I got I think 200 pieces and more than I could ever use. So the birthday boy is going to get a lot of extras when we're finished with this cake. I've got myself a square cake board. I'll leave details of the size of this cake board and look, it's really gonna depend on how many dinosaurs and how much of a setting you want to put around it. I've iced mine with a bit of green icing, so some green fondant, and I do have a whole tutorial on my channel that shows you how to ice and fondant a board. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. And I've just got mine on a little cake decorating turntable today for ease. I've got my giant cupcake which has been baked. We do have a whole series on how to get your giant cupcake all baked and out of its little cupcake liner. I've used a mud cake today because I want a really heavy duty cake for this volcano. We're going to be coring out the center of it. If you use something like a mud, it's quite a dense cake and it's going to hold its shape a lot better than if you use, say, a sponge. I've got those on a cooling rack and I've got a couple of trays. Now this is just gonna to be to catch a bit of our mess today. I've got a circular cookie cutter. I've got some of our dark chocolate ganache and I've also got some white chocolate ganache. I will leave all of the ingredients for these recipes in the description box below. We have a whole tutorial for the dark chocolate ganache. For the white chocolate ganache, I've made the recipe as, as per the instructions below. Then I've halved it and I've colored half red and half orange. You can use any food coloring you like. It can be liquid, paste, gel, powder. It really doesn't matter for ganache. I've got a small serrated edge knife. I've got a big serrated edge knife or a bread knife. I've got just a smooth edge or butter knife. I've got some scissors. I've got a couple of Ziploc bags. And for our smoke effect, I've got just a little plastic shot glass. You can also use a little candle votive or anything, glass, plastic, it doesn't matter. And I've got just a little new medicine dropper. These are only about a dollar for us down at the local pharmacy. You're also going to need a little bit of dried ice. Now, initially I thought dried ice, oh, what a pain, where am I gonna find it from? I got dried ice pellets for $8 a kilo, which is so much more than I'm ever going to use. It lasts for a few days so long as you keep it airtight, doesn't need to be stored in the freezer so long as it's in an airtight container and it gives us that brilliant smoky effect. So let's get started. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to carve up our giant cupcake. So you can see there's going to be quite a bit of mess. We'll pull our, our rack out here and pop it off to the side. I want to try and catch some of my mess so there's not as much cleaning up for me to do as we get through this tutorial. So you want to make sure that you've got a nice flat bottom on the base of your cupcake. You can see there as it's risen, it's actually been drying on its base or cooling on its, on its head, I guess. So it's flattened down quite a bit but you really wanna cut it along, sort of along this line with the ripples because you want that to be the base. So I might go just a touch underneath that. We'll have a little bit of a ganache circle. So as I cut that, I'm actually going to turn the cupcake around and that'll give me a really nice even cut. Fingers crossed. And look, for your volcano, it doesn't matter if it's not 100% even or 100% level because it's a volcano, it's a mountain. So it's not technically supposed to be perfect. Just going to just a little bit there that I need to trim off. And there's my nice flat base ready to go. Turn that over. So you're looking at the bottom half of your volcano. We'll pop that just down there. This is going to go with some of my leftover ganaches for dinosaur cake pops to go with my extravagant dinosaur dessert table for my son's birthday. So you want your top here. Now you're going to take the top and I'm going to cut along. So I'm holding it here, but you'll notice I'm not actually at risk of cutting myself. I'm just gonna hold it, because I'm holding underneath where the knife is going. And once again, I'm turning. You'll see how beautifully the mud cake cuts in comparison to, say, a sponge cake. All right, so now you wanna just position that on top. And what you can see there is a little bit of overhang. So it's kind of looking a little bit like a, a mushroom now. We wanna trim that overhang off, but be warned, this little bit of overhang can be a little bit crumbly because it's quite firm because of the different 
uh, the different cooking spray and the cooking oil that we've used. So I like to get my smaller serrated edge knife. The other thing we want to do is we want to cut off these little ridges that are common with the giant cupcake cases. So to begin with, I'm just going to run my knife around, being really careful not to cut yourself there. I'm just going to run my knife around and just smooth them out. It's just going to look a little bit unusual if you've got a, a big volcano that's got kind of these perfect circular ridges in the top. So you don't have to be perfect about getting them out. So once you've gone around your first layer, just position it on top. So you've got there sort of nicely sized. The only thing that I do want to do is just grade down that edge a little bit because it's just looking a little bit like it kind of drops down a bit too neatly there. So leaving that on top of that giant cupcake, I might pop it back in my tray just so that I can once again store the mess. I'm just going to go around it like this, just by eye, and just shave it down. All right, now for our volcano, we want to take the top off. So I'm just going to cut straight across the top. Have a look at your circle cutter. And once again, this might change depending on how big you want your volcano, I guess, hole to be. But I don't want to take too much off the top there because I do want to try and retain a nice top to my volcano. So that's about the same size as my circle cutter. You want to go a little bit bigger because you need that flat ridge to come out about a centimetre all the way around your circle cutter. So I'm going to just go down another centimetre and cut again. You can see how many cake pops we're going to get out of all this cut off. That is perfect. So this is going to be where our lava sits and it's all going to come over the top of our volcano. We'll just do a little bit of a tidy up and we'll come back and we're ready to get decorating. All right, so we've cleaned up a lot of that mess. Now take your nice neat top and make sure that you sit it down. I'm just going to sit it behind me exactly in the same direction because we've trimmed it pretty well perfectly to size so you don't want to be turning it around here. Take your circle cookie cutter and right in the middle there push down. Leave it sticking out just about a millimetre so just a fraction fraction of an inch and give it a twist. Now this is the great thing again about mud cake as you twist it you can actually see that cake is now twisting in that little core and pull it out. You don't want to go all the way to the bottom of the cake. This is going to be where our hidden lava is. So when they actually cut the cake, lava is going to flow out of the centre of the cake, which is going to be visually spectacular. But you don't want to cut all the way down to the bottom or your lava is going to seep out underneath your giant cupcake. So you really need that cake there to catch it. So now for the top cake, once again in the middle, you just want to push that cookie cutter through. And I'm going to push that all the way down because that's quite a thin piece. Lift it up and push all the way through. So you can see there I'm actually pushing all the way through. And then we'll push that cookie cutter out. So take your knife. We're going to take a little bit of that chocolate ganache and just moisten the top here with a little bit of ganache. It's just going to be a delicious glue. And then we'll stick our volcano top back on. Perfect. Now we can see a volcano starting. Now what you want to do here, and it does get a little bit messy, hence the tray and the cooling rack underneath, is we're just going to scoop this ganache on and just cover the outside of this volcano. You could leave it raw like that. It still does look very volcano-like, but you don't want to expose your cake to the air. It's going to dry out really quickly. So this ganache is going to seal that cake and make sure that it's going to last a couple of days so you don't have to be frantically making it on the morning of your child's party. So you can see there, I'm just going to use my knife and I'm just going to start at the top and just almost just let it fall down or drizzle down. Don't worry too much about the, the rim of the volcano because that's going to have our lava ganache on it anyway. And I'm just going to smooth it over until I've covered the whole thing. All right, so you've got your volcano there and that ganache is still really wet and quite sticky. So if you'd leave that for an hour or so, that ganache is going to start to firm up. And when you do actually serve this cake, it's not going to be that wet and sticky. It's going to be quite firm. It will actually almost solidify a little bit around the outside of that cake. So it's time now to apply our cake to our board. So we want to take our cake board. You want to take just a little bit of chocolate ganache and this is just going to glue the cake to the board. Pop it in the centre. And then using that knife, we're going to lift the cake off the tray using the knife. You can also use a pallet knife or actually I might even use my bread knife for this just because it's a little bit longer. 
So I'm just going to slide it underneath the cake. Once again, mud cake, a lot more stable than if it was a sponge. And don't worry if you're moving a little bit of that ganache around. I'm actually going to stabilize it by just putting my fingers in the lava hole, transferring it. I'm going to take my other knife and I'm just going to push that up against the cake as I pull this knife out. Beautiful, a seamless transfer. So we're ready, we're getting to the pointy end of our volcano tutorial now. You can see it's really starting to take shape. So what you want to do here is take your Ziploc bags and we're going to put some of our red and some of our orange ganache in each one. So one's going to have red and one's going to have orange. Make sure that you let any air out of that bag before you seal it up. All right, so from here you can probably guess what we're going to do. We want to just cut the corner off your Ziploc bag. So just make sure that you're not doing it over the cake. Just cut off a corner. It doesn't have to be particularly fine. Actually, I'm going to cut off quite a chunky corner there. Make sure you know where your little piece of plastic has gone and pick it up as soon as you can. You do not want to risk that plastic going into one of the cakes that you're making or any part of the cake you're making, especially not when it's a kid's cake. Actually, when it's anyone's cake. Same again with the orange. All right. Now, for the lava, I like to hold them both together and spin as I'm going and then turn them around. Beautiful. Once you get to about that full, so about two thirds of the way full, take your toothpick and remember we want this to be visually spectacular when we cut it. Take your toothpick and just give it a little, kind of a little stir. They don't stir it so much that you combine the two colours, you really just want to marble them. Now, what I would suggest here is keeping some of that ganache and applying these last little bits just before the party. So if you're going to make the cake the day before, make it to this stage the day before and then you can add all of your little figurines and all the other bits and pieces and then leave it. Just before you're going to bring the cake out for the party, before your guests are going to arrive, come in and finish filling and do your final effects so that it looks like really nice fresh lava and that way, particularly if you're going to do the dried ice technique, that way your ganache is going to be really, really nice and easy for you to put your shot glass into. So I'm going to serve this cake on the day and I'm not going to put my dried ice and my shot glass in until we're ready to serve and sing happy birthday. The cake's going to look absolutely gorgeous. And then what I want to, I guess it's going to look a little bit different once we put that shot glass in. There's going to be obviously a shot glass sitting in the top of it. So I'll take the cake away, put in the dried ice, bring it back, smoking, candles in it, singing happy birthday and everyone will be amazed. To finish this cake off, I will finish it off for you today. So what we're going to do is taking your, actually I might use the orange ganache first. I always prefer to have more of the red than the orange. I think that lava is typically more red than orange. So I'm just going to take it and out over the side. Nice big globs of lava going out over the side. All the way around. Now taking your red, and this is, it really does start to get messy. Like I said, I like to have a little bit more of the red. So taking your red over, sort of in those gaps. And don't be afraid to kind of go over and then over a bit again so that you get that really nice dribbly effect. I will also mention with this, you don't want your ganache to come all the way up to the top of that crater. You want it to be just below when it's all finished. And if you can, you really, you want it to be sort of pooling at the bottom of the volcano there. It just adds a really nice effect to it. So if you're finding that your ganache anywhere is not going all the way down, you need a few more kind of bits of it around the bottom, just do a nice big thick blob on top and it will just naturally kind of ooze down that way. Now take your toothpick again and give it a little stir. And then you just want to just push some out over the top. So you kind of almost have to, a spoon probably would have been a little bit better here, but just push it out over the top and just give it a really nice big marbled glob over the front there. Stir it around, make sure that you've got that marbled effect happening. So I think I need just a touch more orange in there. Just put a little blob of orange on top and give it a little swirl. 
All right, so to stick down our dinosaurs, I'm going to use that ganache as just a glue. You can also use melted chocolate depending on how far you want to transport that, but this ganache is going to set quite nicely anyway. So I'm going to take my trees first and I'm just going to put a little bit of any coloured ganache on them, doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to put, place them around my volcano. So at this stage, if you have perhaps spilled any little bits of crumbs or you've got any mess on your board, this is a great, great way to cover it up. Add in a few trees and add in a few dinosaurs and anywhere that's not perfect suddenly becomes perfect. With your dinosaurs, just put a tiny little bit of ganache on each of their feet. You really don't need much and they're going to come off the board really easily if you use ganache. You'll just be able to pick them up. If you use chocolate, they will kind of require a little bit of prompting to get them up off the board. Stegosaurus. All right, so I'm happy that's all looking pretty dinosaur-y. Now, it's time for our finale. I've got here my dried ice. So I'm going to take that dried ice and I'm going to submerge it into that nice melted lava and just push it down. So you want to push it down and you can see why here I decided not to do this be like at the very, very beginning when the cake first goes out because you can actually tell that there's a bit of a shot glass in the middle with dried ice in it. So it's not ideal for the whole day, but certainly for the, the main event. So I've got some hot water, just tap hot water. And I've also got my little medicine dropper. And you just want to take four or five, just depending on the size of your medicine dropper, four or five to that warm water and pop it in there. And there goes your smoking volcano. So there you've got your fantastic smoking volcano. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this tutorial as much as I've enjoyed making it for you today. And make sure that you head on over to our channel for lots more great dinosaur tutorials. Thanks very much for watching.